Hello everyone, welcome to this fireside chat. I'm Taz, I lead the worldwide solutions architecture community at AWS. Today, joining us is G2 Krishnamurthy, Vice President for AWS Analytics. G2, welcome. Thank you, Taz. So G2, I understand you've had a very rich experience uh, across your career working on unique challenges. I'm sure the audience would love to know a little bit more about you and your journey to becoming VP of AWS Analytics. I'm happy to share. So um, first off, I'm really happy uh, to be here. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to connect with all of you. Um, looking back, I've always been a data geek, uh, right from my undergraduate days. And as a technology, I found that uh, databases, analytics, and machine learning space is a compelling combination of hard technical challenges and something that has a sustained transformative impact to people and businesses. Right out of grad school, um, I had the opportunity to join the SQL Server team at Microsoft. Um, when I started the career, it was great to be part of an engineering team that is focused on building an enterprise-grade relational database that is also easy to use for builders. As an engineer and engineering leader, I shipped many versions of the SQL Server database, took it to the cloud with SQL Azure, and built the first set of big data and machine learning services on Azure. From Microsoft, I joined uh, Facebook, now a meta, to build the infrastructure to keep up with the accelerating scale of the Facebook family of applications, Instagram, WhatsApp, Facebook, Messenger, things that you may know and use every day. I was fascinated by the mission of infrastructure at Meta that emphasized ease of use and governance as much, if not more, than the scale and price performance. It was really fun to innovate in storage, big data analytics, and ML infrastructure, and keep the product teams uh, dreaming big and moving fast. Now, as fun as Meta was, uh, I really missed the opportunity to build for the world. So I'm here. Uh, AWS has amazing people, great customers, the biggest scale in any cloud, and most importantly, the culture of day one. For a data geek like me, there has never been a better time to innovate and impact the world. And I believe AWS is the best place to be. Well, thank you so much for sharing that, G2. And uh, you mentioned being part of the SQL Server team. That must have been some journey. So let's uh, jump into uh, a few uh, nitty gritties about what we are doing here today. Mm -hmm. According to Gartner, Data and analytics are key accelerators to any organization's digital transformation. They enable forward-looking decision-making. How can customers work with AWS to become data-driven? How can they take advantage of AWS's experience in this? So building a business that is sustainable for a long period of time isn't easy. It requires continuous reinvention. Over only 50% of the businesses that were in the Fortune 500 just 20 years ago are still here today. We meet customers where they are uh, in their transformation journey. Every customer is unique. We work together with them as a trusted partner to tackle both their business and technology challenges. We build the solutions to enable everyone in their organization to become data-driven, offer their choice of tools to be most productive and cost-efficient. One such customer is J.P. Morgan Chase. J.P. Morgan Chase has been around for 200 years, and they are one of the largest uh, banks with holdings of over $3.2 trillion, with $6 trillion daily payment, and 54 million digitally active customers. They saw, serve over half of U.S. households. AWS and J.P. Morgan Chase are partnering together to deliver the personalized experiences for their customers and transform their businesses through uh, analytics and AI. Over 35,000 developers in JP Morgan Chase have built 6,000 plus applications and are processing 450 petabytes of data using S3, EMR, Redshift, and SageMaker. Thank you for that, G2. So, JP Morgan's story does sound like an impactful story there, which brings me to uh, a question or rather, uh, to check in with you what your thoughts are on, so like as essays, when we talk to customers, engage with customers, we, we talk about uh, conversations that allude to building for the cloud compared to building in the cloud. 
Now, AWS provides uh, many fully managed serverless analytics services such as Amazon EMR for running big data applications. Uh, we have uh, Amazon Kinesis for uh, streaming analytics. AWS Clue, AWS Lake Formation for data integration and data governance needs, and so on and so forth. How do customers benefit uh, when they leverage these uh, fully managed and serverless services? That's a great question, Taz. Um, businesses, they want to focus, like maximize their focus on how they serve their customers better and how they are making their products better and how they are making their operations more efficient. For example, Integral Ad Sciences uh, is one of our customers in ad tech. Uh, they want to fact maximize their focus and resources in building the best digital advertising tools. And they want to reduce or even completely eliminate all other tasks that are that is not moving the needle for their customers or businesses. They do need to leverage the state-of-the-art analytics and machine learning technology, but they don't want to take on the complexity of managing such a critical infrastructure uh, go through tasks like capacity planning, patching and upgrade, scale, and availability management. What AWS pro like, you know, provides for them is that it abstracts away the heavy lift uh, that, that is needed by providing a fully managed serverless option for analytics services. Amazon Redshift Serverless makes it easy to run and scale analytics without having to manage these high-scale data warehouse infrastructure, which can be a heavy lift. It automatically provisions and intelligently scales the data warehouse capacity to deliver the fast performance for even the most demanding uh, workloads that could be actually unpredictable. It could be scaling up and down over the, day, over the days. Thank you for the detailed response, G2. So now, considering the explosive growth of uh, this uh, digital economy and how data is playing a pivotal role in an organization's uh, effort to be relevant and competitive even. What are your thoughts on the biggest uh, data-related cha challenges? Taz, that's a great question. Um, now, I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, with the data flywheel. At the high level, this is where data is leveraged to improve the user experience, which leads to more users and more usage that generates more data that then you use to enhance the user experience. A great example of the data flywheel is uh, the experience shopping at Amazon. Um, I, as a user, uh, find shopping at Amazon like the most efficient because of its search and the product recommendation. Now, I use Amazon more because of it. Now, the user interactions uh, and the user feedback that Amazon gets actually is then used to uh, enhance the search and personalization. So you can see the data flywheel in action in this use case. Now, over the past decade, this flywheel has become ubiquitous uh, with the improvements in analytics and machine learning technologies, cloud and smartphone. Now we have the ability to collect uh, and process data that is at a scale unimaginable even 10 years ago. And customers have now come to expect personalized experience from every business. Every organization is now adopting data fly flywheel as an integral part of their digital transformation effort. Now, data in organizations today is distributed across many systems. Um, applications store their data in relational databases or file systems or in NoSQL databases. And customers have actually built many data marts or data warehouses or even data lakes and using many different storage formats. Now, this has led to the data getting trapped in silos. And as the digital economy is driving demand, maybe for staying competitive in the markets or launching a new product or thinking through an acquisition or a merger, there is an urgent need for organizations to break down these data silos and work with their data in a unified manner so that they can extract the necessary value to drive the best decisions with the available information. Okay, that definitely makes sense. So following up on that, with data spread in silos or a multitude of sources, and customers are looking to work across these diverse data sets, how are modern architectures helping today? Thank you, Taz. That's a great question. Um, to power these data flywheels, we are seeing the modern data architectures emerging that is replacing the traditional uh, centralized enterprise data warehouses. Now, these architectures are leveraging 
cloud native, built for scale, serverless services from AWS, like EMR, Redshift, OpenSearch, and Kinesis. Uh, for example, uh, Zillow built their Zestimate feature entirely on AWS with services like EMR and Kinesis data streams, which now allows them to have the Zestimate that is more accurate and up-to-date as they are processing data as it comes in, so that the latest and freshest data about homes are used to compute these Zestimates. So these architectures are federated rather than centralized, so that different parts of the organization can move fast while still sharing and collaborating across the enterprises. Customers like Gilead have built this data mesh pattern using Blue Catalog and Lake Formation services to enable governed sharing of data warehouses and data lakes across their enterprises. Customers are also evolving their processing to be more real time and adopting more patterns like graph processing to be more responsive and more personalized for their customers. Okay, and I can only imagine the data governance for these modern data architectures is becoming of paramount importance. Uh, organizations need to make it easy for data producers and data consumers to collaborate on data that is distributed across many different data stores, but do that with the right governance and security controls so that they are meeting their privacy and compliance commitment to their customers and regulators. With lake formation permissions, AWS customers can specify access policies once and have it be enforced across the services like EMR, Redshift, Athena, and Glue. They can leverage the PII detection capabilities in Glue and set policies to mask such data when it is accessed from Redshift. Okay, well, G2, it was great to hear how AWS is helping customers become data-driven to accelerate their digital transformation journeys. Can you also touch upon the cost and price performance aspects? Definitely. Here at AWS, with our scale and customer obsession, we have a unique insight into these challenges. And you can see that reflected in our products and in our roadmaps. AWS services offer the consumption pricing model and offer the best price performance across all of our services. We also offer the most number of serverless analytical services with auto scaling. EMR, Athena, Redshift, Kinesis, MSK, and Glue that are easy to operate and automatically scale up and down to optimize costs. For example, Pinterest, they moved their analytics to open search and reduced their costs by a third or more, even as their scale grew by three times. This actually also freed up their engineers to do what is most important for Pinterest, be the best visual discovery engine in the world. Well, thank you for that, G2. And now moving towards uh, the tail end of our conversation today, how do you envision the evolution of the data domain and the analytics industry? Thank you, Tas. I think this is something that I'm actually really excited about. As we look ahead, every business is going to be a data and ML business. Businesses that put the power of data in the hands of every function, role, and person to serve their customers better, to make better decisions for their business, will have a sustainable advantage. Over 100,000 of Amazon employees use QuickSight to have the right information to do their job. We need to make machine learning as ubiquitous as business intelligence is today. Redshift made it easy for SQL users to tap into the power of machine learning and SageMaker. Over 8 bil 80 billion predictions are made using this capability every week by Redshift customers. With machine learning, we can make it even easier for people to understand their customers and business. QuickSight Q makes interacting with your BI system as easy as asking questions in natural language using business terms that they are familiar with. We are seeing more and more customers excited about QuickSight Q and are actively using it to enable their line of business owners to look at data, ask questions, get the answers they are actually looking for. In fact, customers have asked Amazon QuickSight Q tens of thousands of questions in natural language, getting back quick, accurate answers and visualizations. For example, Forward Safety is a big user of QuickSight Q. They provide fatality prevention solutions to organizations across the globe. They use visualization and analytics in their applications 
focused on reducing fatalities in the workplace. When they rolled out QuickSight Q, they allowed users to ask these questions in natural language, questions that are specific to the use case at the point of use and avoided having to filter and search through the dashboard to get to the results. After all, time is of the essence. And the easier they can make it for their people in the field to access their information, more fatalities are prevented. Looking back, I see this is the most exciting time to be a data geek. And as they say, it is still day one in another. It is indeed still day one. Well, G2, thank you so much for your time, sharing those impactful customer stories and your insights. Uh, we really appreciate that. Audience, thank you for being here with us. And looking forward to more of this. Thank you, Taz, for the opportunity to connect with you and the audience. Um, we'll be diving deeper in these topics at reInvent at the end of November. I really hope to see all of you there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Good point. Uh, the reInvent catalog is up now. Please uh, go ahead, reserve your seats for the analytics sessions to learn more about what G2 just mentioned.